Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. I wanted to ask, I'd seen that the, that the decision to um, suspend or close the T Tatar parliament is going to be appealed to the European Court of Human Rights, and I wanted to know what the status of that is. And just if you could say one word about Siri. In this room, it was described to us that Robert Siri was, went to his car, which couldn't move. He walked to his hotel. You were describing a cafeteria. Just a little bit more detail would be helpful. Um. Я думаю, что будет очень верное решение, но проблема в том, что Россия уже заявила, что если решение Европейского суда по правам человека не соответствует интересам России, то она ее не будет с ней считаться. Но тем не менее, конечно, мы будем добиваться. And it's also the whole population because those people are called to represent. At the, uh, at the very moment, we have our lawyers working on the claims to the European uh, Court of Human Rights. However, we are a bit worried because we know that if Russia does not respect the, um, the decision of the court, it will have no force. And on Robert Seri, uh, he was supposed to give a press conference in the Hotel Moscow in Simferopol. And there were so many journalists waiting for him, and I got, and uh, he actually, the time was delayed. In half an hour of his absence at the press conference, we started trying to find out where he was. And I got the signal from one of my colleagues and friends that some, that rumors are there that he has been, had been blocked in one of the Simferopol cafeteria. It's called Vidinsky Bulochki, which is the Vienna Bands. Uh, we immediately, with my ITN group, English group that I w I've been working with, we, we, dro we drove to that place. And really, it was like, it, w it is a very small cafeteria a plastic one, you know, like it's easy even to uh, raise it. And there were tens of self-defense guys trying to shake that um, that building and they blocked the door and they did not let him out. So they started blackmailing him that in case if he does not leave Crimea immediately, they would harm him. And I remember his face, I remember his eyes because we were the one who were actually physically uh, were with him at that time. He was stunned with these attitudes. And of course I know that those self-defense guys, they did not have an idea and clue of what of who he was actually. Uh, United Nations, it is something of a very distant story for that self-defense guys. And in that case, we started negotiating, and of course, Robert Seri took a decision to leave Crimea, and then they promised to uh, safely take him into airport, and then he, he drove to the airport and flew to Istanbul and then to New York, I think. Okay, so yeah, we can start with questions, Margaret. Thank you. Uh, my, my name is Margaret Bashir. I'm the Voice of America correspondent. Um, to either of you, are, are you worried that the U.S. may not continue sanctions on Russia in the new administration that's coming in January? And uh, what's your opinion of Mr. Trump's uh, stance on Crimea during the election, during the campaign? He see, seemed not to know that Russia was occupying it. Besides his, uh, besides his claims about the referendum and that he can take uh, come to terms with Mr. Putin, that made made us very worry. We have to say that the population of Crimea and Ukraine was more on a Hillary side, but at the same time we were waiting for Republicans to come to office because they usually take a more harder stance on Ukrainian issue. But now we are waiting that uh, by the time he comes to office, he will be well informed, and we can take it from there. <laughs> 